Hello guys and welcome to today's project of making pineapple jam tarts Malaysian style. The full ingredient list is in the description. This jam tart is popular all year round, but more especially during Chinese New Year. Serving any kind of sweet treats during Chinese New Year symbolizes bringing a sweet life into the New Year. The Hokkien's also consider certain fruits auspicious, and they are particularly fond of pineapples. Ong Lai in the Hokkien dialect, which literally means fortune come. Let's start. This tart is also well enjoyed in the neighboring countries of Singapore, Indonesia and Brunei. Get yourself some pineapples. Take away the top and bottom of the pineapple. And then the skin. After you have taken the skin away, now carefully take away the eyes of the pineapple. Cut the pineapple in half lengthways. I will be showing you two methods on how you can prepare the pineapples. This is the first method. Take a plate and a box grater. We will be using the large side. The plate is there to catch all the juices. Grate the pineapple, but be careful of your fingers. I grate the pineapple until the core. It will feel harder to grate, and then you can rotate the pineapple to grate the softer side. We don't want the core in the jam. You can either eat that or throw that away. You should end up with some nicely grated pulp. And it is uniform in size. Do this to all of your pineapples. Now for the second method. Take the half pineapple and cut that in half again. Take the core out by cutting down at an angle. Do this to all the pineapples if you are going to choose this method later on after watching this video. Have them ready on standby. I will be using a food processor with a rotating grating attachment. I have chosen the large one. Assemble and turn your machine on. Place in the food processor one by one. This is much faster than the box grater, only when you have a machine like this. Otherwise the box grater will do an equally good job. After grating, weigh out the pineapple pulp and juice. Mine came to about 1,785 grams. While this is being weighed out, just check for any loose seeds. Take them away at best you can. We don't want this in the jam. After weighing out the pineapple, add 300 grams of sugar. This is the pulp and juice of five pineapples. I am adding five small sticks of cinnamon, basically one stick per pineapple. You can of course add more cinnamon, and if your pineapples are really big, you can add two cinnamon sticks per pineapple. And the other spice I'm adding is cloves. For the weight of pineapples plus sugar, totaling to about 2 kilos, I am adding 1 tablespoon of cloves. You can adjust the spices to your liking. Also, don't forget, the flavor of spices will get concentrated later in the cooking process. Put all of the ingredients in a large pot and bring it to the stove. Turn on the stove to medium to high heat. We want it to boil. We need to evaporate most of the liquid. It will take some time, at least 30 minutes. You don't have to stir right now, because there is enough liquid to keep the pineapple pulp afloat and to not burn at the bottom. After about 30 minutes, the liquid has evaporated below the line of the pulp. Now is when we have to stay and stir. While stirring and waiting, slowly take out the cinnamon stick and cloves. I have tried it and I am happy with both the spice flavors coming through. You can throw that away. Now is the very important part at this point when you are able to draw a line and the line stays without collapsing is when you can take the jam out for a loose jam for breakfast. I am going to show you what I mean. I am taking some out and placing it in a glass container with some cling film on the surface to prevent a skin from forming. Place this in your fridge to allow to cool and set overnight. Back to the cooking pineapples. Cook it some more until most of the liquid has gone. I cooked it for another 15 minutes, stirring constantly. You will know the pineapple jam is ready for making jam tarts, is when you are able to mold the jam into a shape. Here, I am using two spoons to form a quenelle. Once you are able to see the sides clearly and the shape holds itself, the jam is done. Take it off the heat and place in a glass container. Place some cling film on the top of the surface and let cool in the fridge for 8 hours or overnight is best. The next day. 
Let's try the small portion of jam I cooled first. Take some plain bread and have a taste. This recipe is so flexible, easy to spread, nice golden amber color. I can smell the pineapples as I spread it on my bread. It has a good balance of sweetness and with the help from the spices, the fresh flavor of the pineapple is still there. So that was my breakfast. Now that I have eaten, we can start the dough for the tarts. In a large bowl, place a sieve on the top. Pour in 700 grams of all-purpose or plain flour. Start the sieving process. Then pour in half a teaspoon of table salt, 60 grams of corn flour, 120 grams of icing sugar. Give that a shake and then a mix. Place that onto one side on standby. Then take another bowl with 450 grams of room temperature butter. Work it with a spatula until it is very soft and creamy, but still able to hold its shape when you draw lines in it. Pour in four egg yolks and now use a whisk to incorporate the egg yolks and the butter together. Once everything is nicely emulsified, you can pour in the sieved dry ingredients in two stages. Mix everything together by folding the sides inwards. Once the dry ingredients are almost mixed in, you can pour in the rest of the dry ingredients. Now, I am switching to a flexible scraper. Scrape all the sides and go in with your hands. Take everything out onto your work surface. There is no need for extra flour here. Give the dough a good knead just to bring everything together. Shape the dough into a rectangle and divide it into four for better handling. Take some cling film and wrap the surface to prevent it from drying out. Let the dough rest for 10 minutes. After 10 minutes, the dough can be rolled out. Now I'm going to show you my secret for perfectly rolled dough. This will ensure your tarts are always the same thickness no matter who does it. I managed to buy some wooden dowels. A link for this will be in the description. They come in sets of two and are of different height. This is perfect for dough rolling to ensure the height of every single piece is the same. I have chosen the second smallest one. Take your dough and place one dowel on each side. Roll your dough out and just press and roll and the dowel will do the rest to ensure the perfect height. The height of the dough is about 5 millimeters. I also managed to buy an authentic biscuit press for this. A link for this will also be in the description. They came from the same shop. They can also be used for fondant work. The press that I bought comes in two types and they can be flipped around. Working it is very simple. Just press down with the biscuit cutter and then press down the center of the mold stem to get the shape. This flower shape is very common in Malaysia. A biscuit will come out perfectly. Just checking the height of the biscuit and that is what we want. Take your finger or thumb and run it around each of the petals to help release it. And there you go, a perfectly pressed out biscuit. Now, I will show you the other shape. The best part about this dough is that if it sticks to the work surface, you can use your pellet knife to help lift it up. This design has a different definition. Here is a side-by-side -side comparison. Now, just keep rolling out your dough and pressing biscuits out until you fill your trays. Make as much as you want. Make sure to give them a good amount of space for the baking. I made about three trays worth. Trust me, you will want to make a lot because they are so addictive. Once you have made your desirable amount of tarts, let's have a look at the jam. Take a small amount and form it into a ball. The idea is the ball should sit nicely in the center of the tart. It should look something like this. I decided to weigh out one ball to more or less see how much it weighs. It is about three to four grams. Three to four grams is a good amount because the pineapple is very flavorful and that is a decent amount per tart. I have here a half teaspoon measuring spoon. I just basically scoop the jam and then level it 
and it is perfectly at around a 3 to 4 gram mark. There you go, 9 plus 4 grams is 13 grams. My advice is to weigh out the jam first, because then boiling them up to be placed on the tart goes rather fast like this. Now before they go in the oven, the final step is to make the egg wash. Measure in a bowl 5 egg yolks and pour in 50 grams of condensed milk, and then 25 grams of milk. Mix it well. I would advise straining it. We don't want any unwanted bits like this to be in our egg wash. Here is a little trick. When you have to egg wash loads, I don't bother with a brush, I use a spray bottle. Pour it into your spray bottle and because we sieved it earlier, it will come out smoothly. Test the spray. Give your tarts a nice coat all around. Bake your tray at 170 degrees for 16 minutes. Turn the tray about halfway for even baking. Take them out of the oven and there you have it, pineapple jam tarts. But first, let it cool down. The egg wash helps to define the pattern on the biscuit, as well as giving it that nice golden brown shine. Wait until they cool down to room temperature and enjoy. You can keep it in an airtight container for up to two weeks if you can resist. They are so, so delicious. I'll be honest with you guys. I had about eight while waiting for the others to bake. Also, if you are making this for Chinese New Year, Kong Hei Fat Choi and have a sweet year ahead. And there you have it guys, pineapple jam tarts, Malaysian style. As usual guys, it was a pleasure having you with me on this journey today. If you enjoyed what you watched, please leave a like, comment down below and subscribe to be notified of upcoming videos and I shall see you in the next one. Bye for now.